I talk about Zoom all the time, probably because I work for Zoom. But also, I talk about Microsoft all the time, probably because they're the biggest IT ecosystem in the world, and almost any enterprise-level customer is going to have Microsoft in their environment. And a lot of times I hear, well, I already have Microsoft. What do I need Zoom for? That's a great question. And a lot of it comes down to our ecosystem and our platforms integrating together. It's not just Teams or Zoom. It's bigger than that. It's much, much bigger than that because Zoom integrates and coexists with a lot of Microsoft products. There's a lot of things that Microsoft does that Zoom just doesn't do. Like we're not a file storage company. Uh, we're not a security and compliance company. We're not really a productivity company like Office 365. That's not what we do. We are a collaboration and communication and AI platform that has to fit into multiple ecosystems like Microsoft, Google, even Apple. The cool thing is Zoom doesn't care what ecosystem you choose. We can work in any of them. So today I wanted to recap a video I did a few months ago that talks about all the ways that Zoom can coexist and integrate inside of a Microsoft ecosystem. Let me know what you think. A perfect example of Zoom's application marketplace power is our integration with Microsoft. Five years ago, Zoom was a UCAS company, providing meetings, audio, and video. But then we added phone, and then we added webinars, and then we added rooms, and then we added AI, and then we added call center, then we added productivity, and the small UCAS company became a bigger CCAS company, and then we became a collaboration and communication platform. And that's an important difference because when we talk about integrating with Microsoft, Microsoft is a vast ecosystem, probably the biggest in the world. There's certainly Apple and Google, but Microsoft from an enterprise footprint is probably the largest in the world. And Microsoft does a bunch of stuff that we don't do. For example, they're a file repository company. They're a productivity company. They're an email and calendar company. They're a security and compliance company. None of those things is what Zoom does. We're a collaboration and communications company, and we fit into that Microsoft ecosystem. So here are some of the ways we do that. When I talk about productivity, I'm talking about two major players in this space, Google and Microsoft. They make Google Docs and Google Slides. Microsoft makes Word and Excel. But how do we bring the power of those ecosystems into the Zoom platform? If you were to walk down the street with a Microsoft shirt and ask somebody, hey, name a product that Microsoft makes, I guarantee you they're probably not going to say SharePoint or Microsoft Purview. They're probably going to say stuff like Outlook or Word or Excel. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. We can now bring the power of Office 365 into the Zoom platform. And we can do that two different ways, with OneDrive and SharePoint. You're probably using SharePoint for your files for, for projects or, or teams, but you're probably using OneDrive for individual files for presentations like PowerPoint. We can bring both of those into the Zoom client now with our productivity integration with SharePoint and OneDrive. Imagine being inside of the Zoom client thinking to yourself, hey, I gotta start an Excel document or a Word document. In the past, you had to leave the Zoom client, go to Word or go to Excel, create your file, save your file, upload your file into email or text or chat, and then send that file. You don't have to do that any longer. You can literally start Office 365 documents as well as Google documents inside of the Zoom application itself. Zoom users no longer have to leave the Zoom app to create Excel or Word or PowerPoint, even OneNote files. You can do it right from the Zoom client itself. Think about the productivity of the user. I'm in Zoom. I want to start a file. I just launch it right from Zoom. I create all my data in the files. And then I can just share that file with any of my users or teams or channels. And then everybody, a part of those channels or everybody that gets one-on-one -on -one gets that file. Now two people can be in that file at the exact same time, co-authoring on that file and sharing that file. And I never had to leave the Zoom client to do it. That's the first way we can do it with productivity and the Office 365 suite of products. And by the way, I did mention Google. We can do the, all this with Google as well with our Google Drive application. If you're a Microsoft customer, you're probably utilizing Microsoft Exchange for your email platform. But Zoom can now integrate fully with Microsoft Outlook. Outlook is the window to look at Exchange. We can actually use Zoom to be the client that looks at Exchange. Now you can retrieve all your emails right from Microsoft Exchange using the Zoom client, allowing users to stay inside the Zoom client longer, being more productive. Imagine being able to read all your emails, reply to your emails, forward your emails, and never having to leave Zoom to do that. Sure, you can still go and use Outlook, that's fine, but staying inside the Zoom client creates more effective users. Not only can Zoom be your email client, but we can also be your calendar client, and we can synchronize that calendar with Outlook. Imagine being inside of Zoom and looking at your meetings for the day, and they don't just don't have to be Zoom meetings, they could even be Microsoft Teams meetings or even lunch meetings. It doesn't matter because you'll be able to see your Microsoft Exchange calendar inside of Zoom. You no longer have to leave Zoom to go to Outlook to check your calendar. You can do it right there in the client. It's amazing. 
Earlier, we talked about Zoom Scheduler and how we're bringing that application to make scheduling meetings more effective. We could also bring that power into Zoom, utilizing the connection with Microsoft Exchange and the calendaring system. Lastly, we bring in AI Companion. Now you can use AI Companion to actually reply to email inside of Zoom. And that email, remember, is an exchange. So we're actually harnessing the power of Microsoft Exchange inside of the Zoom client, utilizing AI Companion to create those email responses. Make them longer, make them shorter, change them to humorous. You can do that with AI Companion and Microsoft Exchange. Certainly when we're talking about the UK space and Microsoft, you have to bring up Microsoft Teams. Teams is a powerful application, but we can bring the power of Zoom into that Microsoft Teams experience. And we do that a few different ways. We could actually bring in the power of Zoom meetings and Zoom phone inside the Microsoft Teams experience. First, we fully integrate with Azure Active Directory. So all your identity repository and authentication are fully brought into the Zoom platform. All the information from a user, you know, their department, their username, the telephone number, Zoom can harness the power with full integration with AAD. We can actually connect Zoom meetings and Zoom phone a couple of different ways. One, direct routing as a service. Should companies want to stay in Teams all the time, but use a native phone dialer inside of Microsoft Teams, that's okay. We can now connect that phone into our Zoom phone platform, bringing higher quality and higher resiliency into Microsoft Teams. By harnessing the power of Zoom phone with direct routing as a service, it provides companies with a couple of different things. One as mentioned, you can use the native phone dialer inside of Teams to make phone calls. You'll now have a higher quality phone and a higher resiliency phone inside of Teams. What this also does for companies is create operational readiness. What if Microsoft Teams goes down? What's your solution as a business to keep phones running? If you have Zoom phone, you have a backup system in place right away. Should Teams be down, you could automatically have users switch over to Zoom phone and be up and running from a PSTN telephony usage. Next, we have the Zoom app inside of Microsoft Teams. Just like Zoom, Teams has a marketplace and Zoom has an application built inside that. What this allows is you to bring in the user experience from Zoom inside of Microsoft Teams. A couple of different ways with meetings and phone. Users can now create ad hoc Zoom meetings inside of Microsoft Teams. Users can actually create scheduled meetings inside of Microsoft Teams. Users can actually do one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings inside of Microsoft Teams, or even create channeled meetings inside of Microsoft Teams using the Zoom platform. We can also bring in Zoom presence inside of Microsoft Teams. This is powerful because in the past, the two systems have never connected with presence before. Now imagine being a Microsoft Teams user and I pick up the Zoom phone, guess what? We're gonna push that busy information across the platform. So now Microsoft Teams users will see that I'm on a Zoom phone call. Same with Zoom meetings. If I create an ad hoc Zoom meeting and now I'm busy, I can actually push that presence into Microsoft Teams. So Microsoft Teams users know that Patrick is busy on a phone call or on a Zoom meeting. Finally, Dynamics 365. If you're a Microsoft customer, you might be using Dynamics 365 as your CRM solution. Guess what? We fully integrate Zoom phone and Zoom contact center inside of Dynamics 365. So when salespeople or support people are inside Dynamics 365 and need to make a phone call or receive a phone call, they don't have to leave that application to do it. Zoom is built right into the app to make those outbound calls right from Dynamics 365. Next is chat. In the past, Microsoft Teams users could chat with Microsoft Teams users, and that's it. Zoom team chat users can only text with other Zoom users, and that's it. No longer is that a restriction. We can now chat across platforms with our partner, Mio. Mio allows the connection between Zoom team chat and Microsoft Teams, so users can actually text and chat across platforms. And not only from a user perspective, but we can actually do it from a channel perspective. If you're a Microsoft Teams user or a Zoom user, you're probably part of hundreds of different channels. We can now synchronize those across platforms as well. So Susie in HR doesn't care if Ted and Legal is in Microsoft Teams and she's in Zoom. I can now share information across platforms, chat information across platforms, as well as send reactions and emojis, even files. And files is an important part of the story because remember I told you earlier that now Zoom can integrate fully with SharePoint and OneDrive? Guess what Microsoft Teams uses as a file repository? You guessed it, Microsoft Teams uses SharePoint and OneDrive as well. So now we can actually send files across platforms and that's a cool thing. We're actually not sending the file across the platform, we're actually sending a pointer to where the file is located on OneDrive or SharePoint. Now users from Zoom and Teams can actually seamlessly co-author on the exact same file regardless of what client they're in. Finally, we have whiteboard integration with Microsoft Teams. Should you wanna use Zoom as your preferred whiteboard solution? Great, you can now share that whiteboard with Microsoft Teams users using that Zoom app we talked about earlier. So those Microsoft Teams users can actually open up a Zoom whiteboard, co-author on that whiteboard from Microsoft Teams, and also users from Zoom can do the same thing.
We're trying to make this seamless integration across both platforms so users have choice, whether it's Zoom or Teams, but they can still stay connected and collaborate together. We talked about Zoom Spaces earlier. Part of Zoom Spaces is Zoom Rooms. We can now integrate with the major platforms in this space. Zoom Rooms can integrate with Microsoft Teams, Cisco WebEx, even Google Meet. What this allows is users to be able to utilize the power of Zoom Rooms, even if they're Microsoft Teams users. Microsoft Teams users can schedule meetings in a conferencing room. Even if it's a Zoom room, you'll be able to walk into that meeting room, see the join button, hit the join button, and join that experience right from a Zoom room, even though you might be using Microsoft Teams, and vice versa. Should you be a Zoom user and you want to use a Microsoft Teams room, you can do that too. We have this integration. It's called Direct Guest Join, and that's one way we integrate, but we also integrate dynamically. Say you're walking down the hallway and your boss invites you to a quick Microsoft Teams meeting and all you have is a Zoom room. Walk into the Zoom room, hit the Microsoft Teams button dynamically, enter in your meeting ID, and you'll be able to join that meeting right from a Zoom room. You can do that with WebEx as well as Google Meet. It's pretty powerful. The major driver for companies going from an E1 or an E3 to an E5 is security and compliance. And Zoom can take advantage of that upgrade as well. Think about this. We talked about SharePoint and OneDrive being the file repository inside of Teams. We also talked about it being a file repository inside of Zoom. Utilizing the Microsoft file repository solutions, you can now apply all of your Microsoft purview solutions, such as DLP, eDiscovery, information barriers, and data lifecycle to all those files inside of Zoom or Microsoft Teams. What if you had a DLP policy that says, hey, all financial information is not allowed to be sent, like ABA routing numbers or credit card numbers. And since you're using SharePoint as a file repository, all those DLP policies will apply to all the files inside of that SharePoint site. And since Zoom is using that SharePoint site for a file repository, that DLP policy will apply to Zoom. So for example, say Bob in accounting creates an Excel spreadsheet, accidentally puts a whole bunch of customer credit card information in it and tries to send it in Zoom, not gonna happen. Microsoft Purview will see that policy get hit because it's trying to send an Excel file inside of SharePoint. And therefore all those policies that you have in Microsoft Purview apply to all those files inside of Zoom. Same thing with eDiscovery and email. Since we're using Zoom to connect to Microsoft Exchange, all of those policies from Microsoft Purview that are eDiscovery policies apply to Exchange on the email side. So therefore, Zoom will honor all those policies inside of the Zoom client. Another great way to take advantage of upgrading from your E3 to your E5 using the power of Zoom. And finally, Azure integration. We talked about using Azure Active Directory integration with Zoom, but we're going to expand upon that. All the apps I've talked about today are actually stored in an enterprise application folder inside of Azure. We apply permissions to all the Zoom apps inside of Microsoft using Graph API. When users integrate Zoom with Microsoft, we can actually take advantage of SSO or single sign-on, as well as all authentication inside of the Zoom platform using Azure. And since we're using AAD for all of our profile, we can take advantage of all that by using all that rich profile content from Azure and bring it inside of the Zoom client. So when you want to chat with somebody or call somebody, you can pull up all their information using our Azure integration. And finally, if you're using Intune for MDM or mobile device management, guess what we have? We have a Zoom app, especially for Intune. Now companies can utilize the power of Intune and push out Zoom and completely control that Zoom experience on a mobile device. So I hope that video is helpful to clarify some of the ways that Microsoft and Zoom actually coexist in the same ecosystem. So as you can see, it's not just about Microsoft Teams. Zoom integrates and coexists in many areas of the Microsoft platform. Oh, and by the way, did you know I published a book called The Ultimate Zoom Cookbook? That's available now from Amazon. Published by Pack Publishing, I really had a great time the last six months writing this book. And it's about everything that Zoom can do from a client perspective. The book is really aimed at the average user and how to utilize the power of Zoom. So please check it out. If you buy a copy, I'll sign it for you next time I see you. And as a shameless plug, please, if you like videos like this or want to learn more about Zoom overall, follow me on LinkedIn or better yet, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm Patrick Kelly, the Tattooed Nerd.